my dad called me one day and he said, hey, you know, I'm going to this bull cell in Dillon, Montana. Do you have some vacation time you can take? And I had never been to a bull cell. I had never been around cows at all. And I said, okay. Rick and Jesse are just totally engaging and trying to figure out how to buy bulls and what, what they should be looking for. And so I saw, I saw a spark that day. I kind of played both sides of the coin. I went to her and I'm like, hey, you know, if dad offered you a job, would you take it? And she's like, you know, I'm thinking about it. And so then I went to him and I'm like, you know, cause that's what moms do, right? And so I went to him and I'm like, hey, if Jesse's really interested in this, would you hire her? And he's like, she needs to make her own decisions. You know, I want what's best for Jess. So I really just wanted to be, you know, in the business world where I could take vacations when I wanted and worked nine to five, but I fell in love with cows pretty quickly, so there was no turning back. She was fascinated by that and I was really happy. That's how the cattle side took off, was Jess took that over. We did that in 2009, we started with 25, and we've got about we run about 400 mother cows now. So I am Jess Trask. I am Rick and Kim's daughter, and I'm the ranch operations manager of Perigo Hay and Cattle. Jess is a kindergarten teacher. She said, I just hope I'm alive when Jess becomes president of the United States. That's what you're dealing with, what you're doing with Jess. She started this on live beef sales, and it's been unbelievably popular. It's, it's amazing. So we wanted to get into uh, selling directly to consumers because the markets are always volatile. They're always going up and down, and we really didn't feel like we had any control of the prices that we were getting for our beef. And so we thought, you know, if we just sell directly to consumers, we can set our prices, and hopefully people will like it, and hopefully people will buy it. But it was just something that we can have control over. We also wanted to do it because we care about where food comes from. And we care about the beef we eat. And the beef that we eat is the same beef that we're selling. And I think that's important for people to know is that we would never treat an animal in any way that would harm it at all because we're eating it just like you guys are eating it. She really wants to uh, represent the farmers and the ranchers in a positive way and uh, really get the word out to how important this job is and how family sacrificing it is to do this job. We know that the average age of the farmer and rancher is 58 to 60. It's not 29 like myself. And so I think that the more young people get on social media and kind of just show like, this is what we do on the ranch every day, that the more it'll grow and the more it'll help the ag industry and help, um, you know, kind of set those myths straight and set those wrongs correct. Just be a voice for ourselves, be our own advocates. And I think that it's only gonna get better from here. When you get older and you've been doing it a long time, you get kicked in the teeth about 25 times. But when you're around young people, especially Jess, like Jess, you know, she doesn't see any downside. She's just got all these ideas and taking it and going to a whole new level, you know, a whole thing that we would never do. She has the can-do attitude, and I like that about her. My dad is, he takes the cake. Um, he is the hardest worker. I mean, he'll, he'll never stop. He'll work till the day he dies, and then he tells me, just bury me out with the backhoe. You know, it was just a lot, a lot of work. I can't tell you how many times I was already in bed before my dad came home for, from the day. And so just, you never really saw him. They were always working really hard. You know, my parents never took a vacation. Something that my parents always instilled in me since I came back was like, you don't have to be married to the ranch. Like you, you have to work hard for it to succeed, but you need to go home like at night and be in your own house. and take vacations and do that kind of thing. So they've been really good about having that work-life balance. And they couldn't because they were starting out, but as the new generations come up, we've had a little bit more flexibility with that. I don't think this is 
the end for her. I think this is going to be another platform for her to exceed in another, another area. We only have a certain amount of acres in the United States that we can produce beef on. And if we don't take care of that, then the sustainability of our food chain will crumble. And right now the population of the world keeps growing and growing and growing, but we still only have this specific amount of acres. So we have to make sure that we don't deplete the nutrients in the soil. And we have to make sure that we don't take up too much water and all these different things because we need beef to continue on for generations. I think as any parent, I think that's all you're really trying to do is to raise a kid that can solve their problems. That's all you're trying to do. So just, she takes the bull by the horns and she gets in there and gets it done. <laughs>